Good evening, everyone. Welcome to tonight's Common Council meeting. As always, before we start the meeting, we ask our city clerk to read for us a quote of the week. Thank you, Mayor. Integrity is not a 90% thing. It is not a 95% thing. Either you have it or you don't. Thank you, Madam City Clerk. Call the ninth regular meeting of the Common Council to order. Please call the roll. Boren. Here. Balk. Here. Serta. Here. Gisha. Here. Hannah. Excuse. Heidemann. Here. Kittleson. Here. Cleonis. Here. Manny. Here. Meyer. Here. Montemayor. Here. Rinfleisch. Here. Ryan. Unexcused. Vanderweel. Here. Verhasselt. Excuse. And Wangaman. 13 present. Quorum is present. Alderman Maddie, would you please lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Alderman Manny. Next item on the agenda is approval of the minutes. Vice President Bourne. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I move that the minutes from the July 16, 2007 meeting be approved. Second. Motion and second. Approved minutes under discussion. There being none, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Minutes are approved. Next item is a proclamation for National Health Unit Coordinator's Day, and I believe Ms. Kathy Zimbel is here. Good evening, Kathy. And this is, again, another one of those great things that I get to do as mayor that has no stress, just pleasure. And it's a proclamation uh, for the National Health Unit Coordinator's Day. Whereas the National Association of Health Unit Coordinators was founded in August 1980, and whereas rapid advances in Madison have encouraged the growth and expansion of the unit's co unit coordinators' responsibilities, and since 1980, this professional occupation has been known by as many as 75 titles to include unit clerk, ward clerk, unit secretary, unit manager, and unit coordinator, and whereas the work includes a variety of responsibilities to assist in running a unit to include patients' admittance, ordering diagnostic studies for patients, transcription of physicians' orders, payroll and scheduling, to name a few, and whereas their mission is dedicated to promoting health unit coordinating as a profession through education, certification, complying with NAHUC standards of practice for health unit coordinators and code of ethics, and where else health unit coordinating is promoted as a profession that requires skills and expertise in unit coordinating and goals are to increase acceptance of and bring uniformity to the use of the title nationally and whereas mayors, governors, senate and assemblies of many states have declared August 23rd of each year as, as health unit coordinators day across the nation. Now therefore I, Juan Perez, mayor of the city of Sheboygan, do hereby proclaim August 23rd as National Health Unit Coordinators Day. Thank you very much. Our program started in, in our area three years ago, and my professor, Lynn Owen, is here tonight. I was in the first class to graduate. There were 15 of us that graduated from that class, and five of us went on to be certified. We now have a National Health Unit Coordinators committee or chapter at LTC where we meet every other month and I am vice president of that also and I also am a member of the National Health Unit Coordinators Committee on the certification board. So we are trying to get everyone in the county to try to get their people to go to these classes because we do learn a lot. We learn everything we need to know in order to put all this data into the system in the hospitals and the clinics. And it's an excellent thing, and I'm glad it got started, and I'm just so grateful you were here to help us. Congratulations. Thank, Thank you. you. <clears throat> Next item on the agenda is public forum. Madam Sue uh, Richards. Um, first on the list, <clears throat> excuse me, is Marge Sagali. And 
can I have your home address, please? His 2732 B like in boy, Nurse Savannah Circle. Okay, and you will have five minutes. Thank you. Good evening. I served on this council from 2004 to 2006, and at that time it was known as the Common Council. As a result of the last election, some of you were elected of your, on your views for fiscal and re financial responsibility. Times have now changed, and I, and I now refer to this council as the Corporate Council. In this corporation, you have your Chief Executive Officer, who is Mayor Juan Perez, Chief Financial Officer, who is Rich Gebhardt, Chief Corporate Counsel, who is Attorney Steve McLean, Chief Operating Officer, who is Sue Richards, City Clerk, who without her and her limited staff, none of these proceedings would run as smoothly as they do. I then refer to you 16 all the persons as the Board of Directors. At the bottom of the chart would be me and the taxpayers and citizens of Sheboygan, also known as the shareholders. Without us shareholders, this corporation does not exist. With the city now trying to run it as a corporation, the human and quality of life factors have been erased from the equation. You need to remember that our lives are being affected by your decisions. A 0% increase sounded wonderful at the time, but that was before the property tax assessments came out, so there went your 0% increase to your shareholders. This is a quality of life issue to me, along with trying to privatize garbage pickup. Let's face it, when companies come in to put in bids, they always lowball the figure so they get the contract, and then after a year or so, they raise their fees. Putting another burden on your shareholders, especially our elderly who are trying to live on a fixed income and trying to stay in their homes that they have worked so hard to keep. You will be nickel and diming all of us to death. I would like to have a drug-free city, low crime rate, a police department at full staff, not a depleted staff. Our fire department is now coming up to speed, and I think that is just wonderful, and everyone should be commended for that. So now, as a shareholder, I would like to request a shareholders meeting, and that I mean a committee of the whole, meaning Alderman Meyer, as, since you're a chairperson of that, at least every other month to hear from the committee chairs what has been happening in your committees, and not just a watered-down version like here on the council floor. Hearing from the department heads and how the restructuring of the table of organization will affect their departments, why, and what will be the cost savings, if any. It is one thing for the table of organization committee to recommend changes. It's another for the department heads to implement them. I would like to have the finance chairperson explain in detail what is being transferred to one account to another, and why, as a shareholder, I also want to know where the monies are going and why. Say, for instance, when I was on, it was an example, I was on the council when um, the project for Optenberg Ironworks came to be. It's still there. What's happening with that project? The people of Sheboygan, your shareholders, don't know what's taking place, what's happening with the Grand State, what's happening at the Sheboygan Motel or Hotel that's here, and how is that going? As I stated before, without our shareholders, this corporation does not exist, and please put the human and quality of life factors back into the equation. Thank you. Now, do I have one more minute? You have more time. Okay. I, since Rich Gephardt is here, and I being the past alderman person on this council, I would like to thank him for all the work that he has done for our city, and that um, I truly give him all the respect that I have when it came to him cooperating with us as um, all the persons when I was on the council. You, you, we, the city of Sheboygan, owe you a debt of gratitude. Without you, some of this never was to be, and I thank you for what you've done for us. It was a privilege and honor to serve with you. Thank you. Thank you. And last on the list would be Val Schultz. And can I have your home address, please, sir? Val Schultz, 1747 Greenfield Avenue, Sheboygan. And you will have five minutes. Thank you, Mayor, and good evening, everyone. I guess several things I'd like to comment on this evening. Uh, the first one, this council or the previous council, which many of you were part of, borrowed approximately $720,000. This not, does not include the value of the land to build a new fire station. 
the then fire chief justified it by saying with the creation of the stormwater fee, borrowing capacity has been freed up for projects such as this. However, after you built the station, you decided to phase out the stormwater fee. So now your debt service has been increased and revenue has decreased. You also voted to phase out the wheel tax and other source of revenue lost. How is bridge and street repair going to be funded in the future with revenues decreasing and debt service increasing? You are taking on the ambulance service under the pretense that it is going to be immensely profitable. Paramedics are going to have dual roles, firefighter, paramedic, with a higher wage than a paramedic only. Personnel costs are the single largest expense in the EMS system. Why not hire paramedic only personnel instead of cross-trained firefighter paramedic? This higher salary along with better benefits than Orange Cross provided and you are going to join, uh, generate a huge profit. What I see happening is that you will charge an extraordinary amount of the paramedics time to the fire, fi firefighter side of the equation in order to make the ambulance service appear profitable. The paramedic should be just that, not firefighter paramedic. Personally, if I have need for an ambulance, I would prefer to have a paramedic whose time is 100% committed to paramedic service. I have a draft report prepared by Tri-State Ambulance after reviewing the La Crosse Fire Department site visit summary dated March 28, 2007 on Fire Department Ambulance Service site visits to Rivers, Oshkosh, and Manitowoc Fire Departments in Wisconsin. It says none of the fire departments track procedural advanced scale success rates, only outcome measures. Interestingly, the medical director of Manitowoc Fire has mandated that every patient transported in a fire department ambulance have an intravenous needle placed regardless of the patient's clinical condition. When asked why this radical protocol was established, the fire department medical director stated that it was due to the fact that the medics were not doing well with IV placements and needed the practice. I'd like to temper my comments by stating that I think we have an excellent fire chief and he's the right person for the job. Uh, he's doing a good job. I just have some differences with this ambulance issue. The second issue I'd like to mention is combined emergency dispatch. If your position is going to be that the county assumes all costs, including construction expense, that is unrealistic. You must be willing to discuss funding options for both the city and the county. With the construction of your new police station, now would be the ideal time to create a combined emergency dispatch center. Let's work on it together. The last thing I've got is I have seen the conceptual design of the proposed pedestrian bridge across the Sheboygan River on the city's website. It is exciting. It would be nice to see that become a reality, but you have to be willing to communicate to convince others that there is a benefit to Sheboygan County, not just the city of Sheboygan. To date, it seems your communications and decisions have been or are perceived to be what you believe is best for the city with little regard for others. Thank you. Thank you. That's it. Thank you. Next item on the agenda, consent agenda. Vice President Bourne. Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> I move that all ROs be accepted and placed on file and all RCs be accepted and adopted. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There being none, please call the roll. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Serta? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Kleunis? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. And Wangeman? Aye. Thirteen ayes. Motion carries. Communications and petitions, 918 through 921, to be referred. Report of officers to 922, lies over. 923 through 939, to be referred. Resolutions introduced three. 940 by Alderman Boren, providing for the sale of approximately $8 million in general obligation bonds, series 200, 207B, and providing other details with respect thereto. Vice President Boren. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second to put 940 upon its passage under discussion. There is none. Please call the roll. 
Bauk? Aye. Serta? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Kleunis? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. And Boren? Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carries. 941 by Alderman Meyer, authorizing an application to the Wisconsin Waterways Commission for the rehabilitation of recreational boating facilities. Alderman Meyer. Thank you, Your Honor. I would ask for suspension of the rules. Is there a second to that? Second. Is there any objection? Alderman <laughs> Gish, are you objecting? I am, thank you, Your Honor. Just curious as to why that would be necessary. Is there some sort of timeline involved? I always get a little nervous during We're suspension about of the rules. Yes, and I would like to ask um, Paulette Enders and um, Chad to come up and explain this. Okay. If there's objection, we're going to call the vote then. Are you still objecting, Omegisha, or, or yeah, no? I would like an explanation. Mr. Okay, then there's no objection, just an explanation. Uh, would you, Paulette, or who's coming? Paulette, both? Mm -hmm. Okay, I need a motion to open up the floor for Chad. He's not department head. Second. Motion and second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Floor is open. Paulette's a department head. Thank you, Mayor and Common Council. Before Chad Palaszczuk gives you an explanation of why we need a suspension of rules, what I wanted to do is introduce him so that you know that who he is. Um, on October, on October, on June 29th of this year, Chad began employment with the City of Sheboygan Department of Planning and Development as its new Economic Development Manager. Chad will be overseeing the operation of the city's entitlement program, lead hazard control program, and other planning and development related activities. His experience includes a Bachelor of Science degree from the University of Wisconsin Green Bay in environmental politics and planning. Chad comes to the city with eight years of planning and grant writing experience, which will then lead into this discussion. Most recently, he was employed at Ayers and Associates in Green Bay, Wisconsin, as a municipal planner. And for those of you that don't know, for the past two years, Chad worked with the city as a consultant on our CDBG program and the administrative side, which included things such as our annual plan and our um, what we call as the CAPER plan that goes directly to our HUD field office in Milwaukee. So in addition, um, Chad has been providing a added assistance in the administration of the program since the resignation of Pete Fullerton, who was our former de Deputy Director of Planning and Development. So with that, um, we welcome Chad, and he will give you a, a brief explanation of the grant. Thank you, Paulette. Um, what, what we're doing is the Marina Committee had some discussion over um, what's been happening at the launch ramps. Um, I guess what's happening is at the end of the ramps with the power loading and the low water levels, there's a crater type thing, if you want to say, three feet by 20 foot depth hole where people are kind of gunning or as they're getting their boats up and it's digging up and undermining the concrete. Um, Bill Bulky had come to me and said, is there any grant money out there? And being a past grant uh, writer, I talked to the DNR and the Wisconsin Waterways Commission has a program uh, called the Recreational Boating Facilities Grant Program, which is um, administered through the waterways. The DNR does it. Uh, it's a quarterly process, uh, a quarterly application cycle. They just started their new season or their new fiscal year in July, and they're only going to have money in the first quarter. So we were under the gun to get an application with plans and specs put together in two weeks, uh, which we were able to do. The application had to be submitted by July 31st to get into that funding. And then the resolution now is coming to the council after the fact, um, so we could hit that time frame. And if the council chooses not to approve the resolution, the DNR would just hold the application. If we move forward, you know, we'll get the resolution to them and move forward. What we're looking at is a 90, 90%, 10% uh, project. 90% would be the state at roughly 63,000, and 7,100 would be the city share. Um, so it, it, you know, it's in their program. It has a. We have to go to a presentation in August to plead the case that we need the money, and it's a good fix. It'll be a permanent fix. What they're looking at doing is rebuilding that area up, extending the ramps out an additional 20 feet with more concrete, precast concrete set in place, breaker run on the end of that. So the problem hopefully is resolved. It's this is going to be a permanent fix versus a temporary fix. 
and um, you know we're just looking for approval on, on the resolution. Okay. Oman Rinfla, you had a question about that? Your light was on? I was just asking. Clarified? Thank you. We have next Alderman Tayunas. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, just asking, where would the $7,100 come from? What fund is that coming from? Our share, the 10%? Bolt, bolt launch fees. Bolt launch fees, thank you. Yep. Alderman uh, Kittleson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just <clears throat> want to see how uh, happy I am that you've gone ahead and done this. I've had calls from several constituents. I don't know if others have had as well, but with their concern of, about the uh, the launch ramps down there, and I'm sure this is going to make them happy. So thank you very much. Any other questions? Okay, thank you very much. Appreciate it. And I think you'll notice that Chad came in and hit the ground running. So thank you, Chad. Any other discussion? Again, is there any objection to suspension? Otherwise, we you did admit a moment that you made a motion already. There's a motion on the floor. And not a second. There's only a motion to um, suspend, and, and then I second. need and there's a second. That's okay. as far as we got. Okay. Now we need a motion to put the resolution upon its passage. Make a motion to put the resolution upon its passage. Second. Motion and second under discussion. There being none, please call the roll. Serta. Gisha, Aye. Heideman, Aye. Kittleson, Cuyunis, Manny, Aye. Meyer, Aye. Montemayor, Aye. Rinfleisch, Aye. Vanderweel, Wangeman, Boren, Aye. and Bauk. Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carries. Thank you. 942 by Alderman Montemayor, accepting the deed from the FNB Sheboygan LLC, dedicating certain described property for use as city street right away. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. I ask for a suspension. Second. There's a motion to suspend and second. Is there any objection? An explanation or objection? Please like an explanation for why we're suspending. Okay, explanation. Could we have Ms. Enders explain for us why we need to get this done quickly? Okay, Paulette? 942. Oh. Okay, Paulette, please hold on. Paulette, please hold on. Attorney McLean. Yes, uh, Alderman Montemayor, I think I can explain it. If you look at the map that's Exhibit B there, uh, <clears throat> this is related to the development of the new bank along Cole Memorial Drive. Uh, there's a triangular piece of property that's not shaded to the right-hand side. It's, it's uh, labeled proposed right away. Uh, that's area that we vacated and the little uh, colored in triangle there's uh, meets and bounds are described there is what we're getting new as uh, additional right away uh, to clean up that intersection there uh, from the bank as part of their project here so uh, they're deeding us part of their property and we vacated part of the existing street right away as uh, for this project to go forward. Alderman okay. Rainflesh, okay, sir. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, as a follow-up, then, is is there a clear reason that it has to be done immediately versus two weeks from now? Uh, that I'm not sure, Alderman Rainflesh. Other other than uh, it'll clean up the right of way there, and whether or not that's done, you know, at this meeting or in two weeks, I don't know. Uh, I can't address that. Okay. Maybe we can ask Paulette. Paulette, would you come up, please? Thank you, Attorney McLean. Again, we're addressing the urgency of suspension. Otherwise, you can wait two weeks. Okay, and, and I'm not aware of any urgency. You know, I haven't been told by staff that it's urgent. They're under construction. As Attorney McLean mentioned, they're just cleaning it up. There isn't, you know, we... We talked about would there be any future use for their, this property. There isn't. Um, it involves a swap, and it's really just cleaning up this excess piece. But, you know, they are under construction, um, so I don't know that waiting two weeks would, you know, would be that, that you know, earth-shattering if you didn't pass it tonight. Okay. Now, at some point, somebody was asked, to suspend here because this this item is on 942 for passage, not for lying over. Is there? Do we know why, Sue? 
Say it again. It's not listed on our, the agenda as lies over. It's um, listed it as came to me as to suspend and pass tonight, so I put it on suspend and pass. Okay, and who was that that said suspend? I don't know my order, do you know? Thank you, Your Honor. I don't know who asked for the suspension, but it did go through plan commission, and they are out there working already on, on this facility quite a bit. And I'm guessing perhaps that's why. Paulette? <laughs> Do you know? No, I, I'm not aware okay. of a request. Then we will, item 942, would you please withdraw your motion? I'll You'll object. Would you please withdraw your motion? Yes, I will withdraw. And second. 942, will I over? Alderman Rain, please. No? Yes. Okay. Alderman Parent, Vice President Boren? Come oh, come in. Okay. 943 by Alderman Ryan approving the first amendment to ground lease between the Redevelopment Authority of the City of Sheboygan uh, and South Pier District 1 LLC. Vice President Bourne. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I need to suspend the rules on this one also. Uh, and Alderman Ryan is not here tonight, so I, what I believe I have to defer to Paulette on this also. Okay, Paulette, would you please come up? Alderman Geisha, would you like an explanation first? I thought you would. Okay. We need it. Attorney McLean will address suspension. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, what this is is uh, amending the ground lease with the, the developer who's developing the Rice Coal Office Building parcel to add in that portion of the property adjacent that we vacated as part of South Pier Drive there uh, in front of. This, this parcel. This gives them additional parking or an area for parking outside for their residential condominium units. The urgency here is they're hoping to uh, file their condominium declarations Friday and offer these units for sale and in order to do that they need to uh, amend the ground lease and that's, that's the urgency in this case. Any other questions? I Mayor, we need a second on the suspension. Right, and I, I will ask again, there is a, a motion to suspend. Is there a second to that? There's a second. Is there any objection or further explanation? There being none, I need a motion, uh, Vice President Boren. Thank you, Your Honor. I make a uh, motion that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second to put 943 upon its passage under discussion. There is none. Your Honor, just Attorney McLean. Thank you. With respect to the document, uh, by adding this additional piece, the, uh, the agreement is also increasing the rent proportionately uh, on the same square footage basis, so they're paying us more for, uh, for a larger piece. Thank you. Thank you. There is no more discussion. Please call the roll. Gisha? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunas? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Vanderweel, Aye. Wangaman, Aye. Boren, Aye. Bauk, Aye. and Serta. Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carries. 944 by Alderman Boren, Bauk, Gisha, and Clayunas authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 07 budget, establishing appropriations for debt issuance expenses for the 07 police facility bond issue. Vice President Boren. Thank you, Honor. Ask for suspension on this one. Second. Motion and second to suspend. Is there any objection? We got a question. Please explain the urgency, Vice President Boren. Uh, I'll try to explain it, and if I can't do it sufficiently, we'll defer to Mr. Gebhardt. Uh, obviously, the urgency with this is we want to be issuing the, uh, the debt for the new police, police facility, and these two fees are necessary, I guess, as upfront money that we need in order to do that. So in order to move along with the police station project and issue the debt, we need to do this as soon as possible. Alderman Gishin, Alderman Rinfleisch, is that satisfactory? Satisfactory, thank you, and thank you, Vice President Boren. Then I would need a, a motion to uh, put the resolution upon its passage. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I'll make a motion that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second, under discussion. There is none. Please call the roll. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunis? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer, Montemayor, Rinfleisch, Vanderweel, Wangaman, 
Warren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Serta? Aye. Gisha? Aye. And Gisha, that's it. Uh, 12 ayes, 1 no. Motion carries. 945 through 951 lies over. 952 and 53 to be referred. Report of committees 5, 954 to be referred. 9, 5, report of committee 6, 955 by law and licensing. Recommending taxi cab driver's license application number 6268 be denied based on his non cooperation with the committee. Vice President Bourne. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I move that the report of committee be uh, accepted and adopted. Motion second under discussion. Is uh, Michael G. Schmidt here tonight? It's not here, Your Honor. Thank you, Vice President Warren. The reason we called in Mr. Schmidt to the committee is that he failed to disclose a, uh, an extensive record of uh, traffic type law violations on his application for his taxi cab driver's license. He had uh, two, op two opportunities to appear before our committee, the second one by certified letter. Uh, he failed to show up on either occasion, so it was the, the recommendation of the assistant city attorney and the unanimous vote of our uh, committee to deny the taxi, uh, the taxi cab driver's license. Thank you, Vice President Bourne. Any discussion on 955? There being none, please call the roll. Kittleson. Aye. Kleinis. Aye. Manny. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Wangaman. Aye. Boren, Aye. Bauk, Serta, Gisha, Aye. and Heidemann. Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carries. 956 by law and licensing, recommending beverage operator's license application number 7517 be denied based on the applicant's non cooperation with the committee and the applicant's record of violations related to the license activity. Vice President Boren. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I recommend that the report of committee be accepted and adopted. Is there a motion, second to the motion? motion and second under discussion? Thank you, Your Honor. Is Jennifer L. Chapa here tonight? She's not here, Your Honor. Thank you. Please proceed. Uh, Your Honor, uh, Ms. Chapa also uh, uh, did not fill out her application properly uh, and also had two opportunities to appear before the committee, the second one by certified letter. Uh, it was uh, on the recommendation of the assistant of city attorney and a unanimous vote of the committee not to grant her beverage operator's license. Thank you, Vice President Bourne. Any further discussion? There being none, please call the roll. Cleonis? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Bourne? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Serta? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. And Kittleson? Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carries. Now, before we go further, Alderman Vice President Bourne will be standing up for the next six items here. So <laughs> <laughs> we may just let him stand up. 957, by law and licensing, recommending granting a permanent change of premises to crossroads at 4604 South Business Drive from May 1st to September 30th to include the grassy area, parking lot west entrance area of the building with the caveat that Mr. Doyle must must receive zoning approval for outdoor activities at the expanded premises by city planning staff or, if necessary, the city plan commission. Vice, uh, we've got Alderman Rensplice hit first. Um, Alderman I'll Rensplice. Re defer to Chairman okay. Bourne. Vice President Bourne. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the report of the committee be accepted and adopted. Second. Motion and second to accept and adopt 957 under discussion. Alderman Rinfleisch. Thank you. I punched in too soon last time. Uh, actually, I ask that we refer this uh, back to Law and Licensing Committee. Um, due to uh, extensive complaints I've received regarding the property uh, and the concerns of residents, specifically um, the letter we have from Marge Sigali uh, from the Mandalayan Apartments. Um, in addition, he has not, as far as I'm aware, I have gone to city planning staff or city planning commission yet to get the permission for that. Uh, so I'd like the opportunity to give the neighbors time to approach our committee and speak on their behalf. Second. Okay, Alderman and Vice President Boren. Thank you, Your Honor. I'll uh, withdraw my uh, motion to uh, accept and adopt, and I have no problem referring it back to law and licensing for further discussion. Very good. Alderman Vanderweel. 
Thank you, Your Honor. I guess my qu my question or my concern is why is long licensing discussing it if we're not even sure if it's going to happen? Shouldn't it go through a city plan commission or city planning decide if they're going to do that and then it should go to long licensing? Just a concern. Alderman, Vice President Bourne. Thank you, Alderman Vanderweele. Uh, Assistant Attorney Adams uh, thought that that we we did have jurisdiction on this, of course, but he recommended that we do have a caveat in there that it go through planning before this would actually be granted. Uh, but uh, at to this point, my knowledge is he has made a, a phone call to Mr. Sokolowski, but he has not followed up with actually going up and working on the issue with him. Okay, but the document is being referred back to law and licensing. Okay, and Alderman Ryan Fleisch. Uh, thank, you, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, we had a, a lively debate regarding the two issues really at hand here. One is the extension of the premises, which I think law and licensing certainly has some control over. And the other would be what well, city planning is allowing, specifically downtown, uh, encroachments on city property for outside seating. Uh, the reality is that, well, the area he wants to expand to is his property, it's not the city property, uh, but it is an area that oh, we're re asking a lot of other businesses to enclose, fence in, have some kind of restricted access. Uh, so I'd like to discuss this furthermore to see what plans he certainly has uh, in order to control noise specifically. Uh, that's one of the big complaints that we had. Uh, the music that played at the time frame he's going to stop and then the access to that. Uh, so I'd like to have it go back there as well. Uh, however, um, I'd like to ask Alderman Montemayor from City Planning Commission if uh, you would like to have this referred to you as well. Alderman Montemayor. Uh, th thank you, um, Alderman Rinfleisch. I would think if, if, if law and licensing is going to deny the change of premises, we don't need to, to look at it at plan, but we should look at it at plan because your um, requirement is that it come to plan commission first. So I would think you're going to look at that and we're going to look at that and we'll come to a meeting of the minds of some way. Well, it's not being denied. All that's being done is being referred back. Now, here, here's my recommendation. Let's refer it back to law and licensing. If at some point you decide it needs to go to plan and just ship it to us. Yeah. That makes sense? Oh, Madam City Clerk. Um, I did speak with Planning Commission this, or Plan Department this afternoon, Steve Sokolowski, and Mr. Doyle has talked to him, but he needs to actually physically come in and apply for a conditional use permit, and once he does that, that'll be referred automatically to Plan Commission, so that's how the progression will happen. So that's where it's at right now. Okay, so that makes sense to me. Everybody okay with that? Referred back? There's a motion to refer back and a second. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries, 957, please note, will be referred back to Law and Licensing Committee. Report of Committees 8, 958, and 959, Alderman Bourne, uh, Vice President Bourne. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I would like to hold these documents, uh, both 958 and 959, to the next meeting uh, th for, the, for the rest of the, uh, for the viewing audience and the audience here. This has to do with the Grand Stay, the Grand Stay Project, the... Uh, hotel, and as of yet, we have not received ironclad assurances, I guess you would say, that the Bonton or Yonkers organization is going to uh, give up the rights to those par the parking lot over there. So we're, we're very, I understand we're very, very close, but we don't have it in, I guess, in writing yet. So we need to hold this for two weeks, and hopefully by that time, the Bonton organization will give us uh, the rights to those parking spaces. Very good explanation, Vice President Bourne. And I may add that it looks very good. So, And there's a motion to hold. Was there a second? Second. second. Any further discussion holding 958 and 59? There being none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 960 by finance, recommend and approve an amendment number one to tax incremental district number 12, city of Sheboygan, Vice President Bourne. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I recommend that the report of committee be accepted and adopted and placed on file and the resolution be placed upon, uh, the resolution be passed. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. If I, may I? Under discussion, the, uh, the, we have had discussions with Mr. Gephardt and uh, Ms. Anders about proceeding with amending the tax incremental finance, uh, 
Tax Incremental District, which is the parking, the Yonkers parking lot and the Grand Stay Hotel. It makes all the sense in the world from our discussions to go ahead and proceed with the amendment, therefore creating the, the uh, incremental district and then following up with the, uh, the, the two uh, resolutions that you, uh, that you just held. Anything else? Any other discussion on that? Then we will act on 960. There was a motion to accept and adopt and put the resolution upon its passage. We will call the roll. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Serta? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. And Clionis? Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carries. 961 by finance recommended entering into an agreement with Skipper Marine Development Incorporation for management and operation of South Pier seawall dockage. Vice President Boren. Thank you, Your Honor. I recommend that the report of committee be accepted and adopted and placed on file and the resolution be passed. Motion and second. Under discussion. There being none, please call the roll. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Rinfleisch? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Serta? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunas? Aye. <clears throat> Excuse me, and Manny? Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carries. Ordinances introduced 10, 962 lies over. Matters laid over 11, 841, resolution number 660708, Viola Manhanna, Boren, Clayunas, Bauk, and Gisha authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 07 budget, establishing revenue and appropriations for funds received from fe federal drug forfeitures. Vice President Boren. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second, under discussion. There being none, please call the roll. Montemayor, Aye. Rinfleisch, Aye. Vanderweel, Aye. Wangaman, Aye. Boren, Aye. Bauk, Aye. Serta, Aye. Gisha, Aye. Heidemann, Aye. Kittleson, Aye. Clionis, Manny, Aye. and Meyer. Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carries. 842, resolution number 66, 670708, Bell of Manhattan, Boren, Clayunas, Bout, and Gisha, authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 2007 budget, establishing estimated revenue and appropriations for funds received from Independence Day activities at Fountain Park on July 6. Vice President Boren. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There being none, please call the roll. Rinfleisch, Vanderweel, Wangaman, Aye. Boren, Aye. Bauk, Aye. Serta, Aye. Gisha, Aye. Heidemann, Aye. Kittleson, Aye. Clionis, Aye. Manny, Aye. Meyer, Aye. and Montemayor. Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carries. 850, General Ordinance Number 210708, Bioloman Vanderweel. Rinsleisch, Ryan, Serta, Kittleson, relating to no parking areas to add a no parking here to corner zone along the west side of North 6th Street from South Curb Line on Erie Avenue to 60 feet, 63 feet south. Alderman Vanderweel. Thank you, Your Honor. I move the general ordinance to be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second to put 850 upon its passage. Under discussion. There being none, please call the roll. Vanderweel? <clears throat> Wangaman, Boren, Bauk, Serta, Gisha, Aye. Heidemann, Aye. Kittleson, Clayunas, Manny, Aye. Meyer, Aye. Montemayor, Aye. and Rinfleisch. Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carries. 851, General Ordinance Number 220708 by Alderman Verhassel, Montemayor, Heidemann, Gisha, and Meyer, amending the code so as to change the city <coughs> attorney's table of organization City Development Table of Organization, and Human Resources Table of Organization. Alderman Montemayor, Alderman Verhassel, Sergeant. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the general ordinance be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There being none, please call the roll. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Serta? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunas? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer, Montemayor, Rinfleisch, and Vanderweel. 13 ayes. Motion carries. 852, General Ordinance Number 230708, Viola Verhassel, Montemayor, Heidemann, Gisha, and Meyer, amending the code so as to change the table of organization of the fire department. 
Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the general ordinance be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There being none, please call the roll. Boren? No. Bauk? Aye. Serta? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Heidemann? No. Kittleson? Aye. Clionis? No. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Excuse me? Aye. Thank you. Vanderweel? Aye. And Wangaman? No. Nine eyes, four noes. Motion carries. Other matters authorized by law, 963 uh, will be referred to public protection and safety. 964 will be referred to law and licensing. 965 will be referred to public protection and safety. Other matters, Attorney McLean. Thank you, Your Honor. 966 is an RO by the city clerk submitting a claim from Gerald Baitlin for alleged damages to his car when a stone flew off of a city dump truck and hit and broke his windshield. That will be referred to risk management committee. 967 is a communication from Marge Segali regarding her concerns with Crossroads applying for a permanent change of premise for entertainment to be outside the tavern and stating that the high level of noise from the entertainment is a major concern as she lives across the street from Crossroads in the Amanda Lane Apartments. That communication will be referred to city plan. Uh, Vice President Bourne, do you want it to go to law and licensing too? Yes, 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 Your Honor, because of the noise complaint. And, li law, and law and licensing committee. Please make that notation to committee, city plan, law and licensing. 968 is a communication by the city, or an RO by the city clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending June 30, 2008 and June 30, 2009. And that will be referred to law and licensing also. 969 is an ordinance creating Division 4 of Article 4 of Chapter 2 of the Municipal Code so as to establish a Department of Information Technology. That will be referred to salary and grievances. 970 is an ordinance amending Section 29-75 of the 1975 Sheboygan Municipal Code so as to delete positions from the Finance Department Table of Organization and to create the new Information Technology Department. That will be referred to salary and grievances. 971 is a communication from Anthony Amrine regarding his car being broken into and the police weren't able to come and take a report in person but did the report on the phone stating that he is upset because he pays taxes and we should have better police coverage. That will be referred to public protection and safety. We have a motion to adjourn. To adjourn. Second. Motion to second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Stand adjourned.